Hi everyone, welcome to another video. In this video we're going to talk about the roll cage that I'm going to put in this car. And first of all the reason why I'm going to put a roll cage in the car. And that's because I uh, want to use this car in very different uh, ways. I want to use it just to cruise around. But I also want to do some track days, some slaloms, some hill climbs. Uh, maybe some ice racing, um, some regularity rallies. So um, I'm preparing the car to do everything. Uh, if you want to go out on track in a fiberglass car, I highly suggest you actually install a roll cage because uh, otherwise it's a bit of a death trap. So um, we'll take a look at the cabin and how I'm planning to make the roll cage. And then we're going to uh, go on to the installation of the roll cage in the car. So I've put in the seat bags so that we have an entire view of the interior and I want to install a roll cage but also I want to have it removable so I can unbolt the roll cage uh, from the car so we'll have a normal interior uh, but I can bolt it in uh, whenever I need to. The hardest thing about putting a roll cage in our Europa is we have uh, only fiberglass to bolt it to and our backbone chassis. So we have to pick up our mounting points from the backbone and then we have to build up our cage uh, from that. Uh, the harder thing is because this is Series 1 Europa, we have uh, the chassis completely encapsulated in the body shell and we have to drill some holes into the body just to get to the chassis. And um, also because the seat bags are the actual bulkhead it's very difficult to get the roll cage there. I'll try to explain uh, how I came up with the design of this cage. So we're using um, the FIA rules, so Appendix K, uh, Appendix J uh, for historic racing, just to uh, get up with the design. So it specifies uh, our tubing size, so we're going to use 38mm diameter with a 2.6mm wall, uh, CDS. So it's seamless tubing uh, with the specific strength um, measurements that we need. So we're going to use that, we're going to use the FIA mounting plates. So now we're going to actually design the cage and I used a lot of different tools to uh, measure everything. So I have an angle gauge that uh, measures position, of course tape measure and also an angle finder. The chassis runs through here and then we're going to have a sill bar essentially which will go from the footwell all the way in the sill to the other side of this bulkhead and therefore I had to drill a couple of holes, one here in the front in the seat base, here's a hole here which will uh, get the tube to go through and then one in the bulkhead However, in this bulkhead there's also the uh, mounting point for the seat belts and it's a really a big steel plate that's completely sandwiched in between a, a lot of layers of fiberglass in the sill and the bulkhead. So I had to use a big hole saw just to drill um, through the steel plate for the mounting of the seat belt. So we have the sill bar going from here through here to the bulkhead and then the sill bar is connected um, with two bars to our mounting plates on the chassis. Then we have a base to build our roll cage from. So I also had to drill uh, this hole in our bulkhead for the main hoop to go through. There's the same one on the other side as well. So we'll have the main hoop here. From the main hoop we'll have a front half lateral that will go from here. Then it will have a band and it will go through here. And I'll have another band which will connect here on the sill bar. Then it will have a strengthening beam that goes from the front half lateral to the ends of the sill bar. And the last tube will be uh, a roof bar that will pick up from the front half lateral here. And it will go like this. It will have a couple of bands in it to follow the curvature of the windshield. And it will connect to the other front half lateral. That's our basic cage. 
and then we have some tubes that we need to add normally you'll have um, backstays for our main hoop however um, it's not possible to um, do it without having to cut into our uh, rear uh, glass or in our hatch so we're going to use our backstays and our door bars as one unit so we're going to pick up from the top thirds of our cage and it will go from here to here so this will act as a door bar and uh, as a backstay for our uh, main hoop and then there's a, a last member and this will be a removable member if I need to take a passenger and that is a diagonal normally you would have a diagonal in either your um, main hoop or your uh, rear stays however um, it's not possible here because of the bulkhead so we're going to pick up on the center of the main hoop and from here it will go to the footwell of the passenger side so that will strengthen it uh, in this direction so I received all of my uh, bands for the roll cage so now we can unpack everything and check if I measured correctly um, if not we have a bit of a problem but um, we're going to try and see how it uh, works out so this is the entire roll cage laid out uh, I'll quickly uh, show you what all the pieces are my initial measurements uh, seem to be okay so um, we'll check these are the sill bars of course the main hoop the windshield bar at the roof level the two front half laterals for the roll cage these are two door bars our uh, front diagonal uh, in two sections these are front supports and these are uh, pieces of uh, the hoop that goes underneath um, the roll cage so this will connect the chassis to the sill bars as you can see the main hoop is in so my uh, holes in the bulkhead were a little bit too narrow um, but I didn't really have to trim them so that's okay I did have to uh, shorten the feet of the hoop on both sides by maybe 8 centimeters and now the main hoop is propped up on some uh, blocks of wood of about 6 centimeters thick so um, it might go a little bit higher on this side if I needed to um, but uh, that's not a problem because our sill bars where the main hoop is mounted to are actually higher than the blocks of wood so I do need to trim uh, the feet of the main hoop even more uh, that's not really an issue so uh, more importantly it fits uh, it has nice clearance all the way around so I'm starting with installing the sill bars you can see there in the corner there's one and here's the other one so it's going through our seat base and then through our bulkhead on the rear you can see uh, the back one sticking out there so now we're going to try to put our main hoop uh, through the bulkhead and to match it onto the sill bars you can see that our main hoop is in and it fits really nicely all the way around there's plenty of clearance it's the tightest here in the corners at the top but it's still about um, two centimeters so it's plenty it gets a bit bigger uh, between the center of the roof and then it's, it's the same uh, on that side as I told you I could raise um, the main hoop a little bit if I want to uh, when adding removable connections but I'm really happy with how it turned out so now we'll connect our sill bar to our um, plates that are bolted to the chassis and the same at the rear and then uh, the sill bars are locked in and then we can start off with our front half hoop I made uh, the first 
of the four outriggers. So it goes from our FIA spec mounting plates that's bolted to the chassis to our sail bar. You can see that the tube has been notched there. It's a little bit high uh, at this side at the moment. I want to have it completely level, so it needs to go a little bit lower. But um, the tubes made the size, so I can just lower it a little bit. So I've just marked um, the length of the tube that it needs to be. So it's from the mounting plate to the edge of the sill bar. So the sill bar will run like that. So it's just the intersection point. And then what I found the easiest, uh, instead of trying to guess how uh, the tube is going to sit and using some uh, basic um, tricks to get the, the notch right, and which what is what I did with the, the main hoop, but it, it's quite fiddly and it leads, needs a lot of work before it's perfect. So I just, um, printed out this template. You can um, calculate these online and print them out. This is just a, a 90 degree one. So we know that this part uh, needs to be the shortest. Our a piece of tubing will overlap the sill bar a little bit. So we'll wrap this around. And we'll use our paint marker just to mark out the notch. Like so, and this is the rough shape of the notch. So we're going to use an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel just um, to lob this off. And then we can use a flap wheel to refine the shape. Now we have quite a rough cut, as you can see. So now we're just going to use a flap wheel just to clean the inside out and we need to round off the corners and also we need to thin uh, the wall at the ends um, because otherwise it won't fit. The easiest thing to do is to use uh, a piece of tube just to check. As you can see it doesn't fit so we really need to um, thin it out to make sure that it will um, will go in. So you can see that I've uh, refined the notch. So I ground it out. Uh, the points are a lot duller and now it fits really nicely. So it's still quite a bit of work um, but I think that this is a quite a good uh, way to do it without having a tube notcher. So we'll take our square to check it. So that's square and it fits right on uh, the center of the plate so it can go a little bit further towards the front however I'll uh, want left and right to be the same and I don't want to be too far on the front on the other side because otherwise it might get in the way of the pedals so that's the front outriggers done so this is our mounting plate for the rear outriggers um, you can see that it's bent 90 degrees so section of the plate goes underneath and this is because uh, it has to have the same surface as the front ones to um, be FIA spec. I've started using the templates for everything so I'm using my digital protractor to determine the angle and then I go online and print myself a template. This one has been cut out uh, roughly so just uh, the straight cuts. And this will get you quite close, but then, of course, you need to finish it. So this one I finished with the flap wheel. And it fits perfectly. This has an angle of 82 degrees. So now we'll fit this to uh, the chassis. So we're going to connect the sill bar with our chassis plate, our mounting plate. You can see how well that our outrigger fits up to our sill bar. The front half laterals are uh, a bit more difficult because they have two bends and there's a rotation between the bends. So um, it's in, in two different planes. So it goes in at roof level. Uh, we need to make sure that we have them the correct way up. 
uh, we need we can check this because this bend is 145 degrees and this one 135 degrees so we're going to mark that that's the bottom you can see that uh, our front half lateral of our roll cage is completely parallel with our a pillar it joins up at the roof and at the bottom at our sill bar when you take a look at it from the side it's completely hidden by the profile of the roof and the a pillar so uh, this is how I'd like it and I notched the tube to fit onto our uh, sill bar and our roof however I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because uh, we need to use um, dismountable joints so that we can uh, remove uh, the front half of our cage and this has several reasons firstly I'd like to be able to remove the cage completely to give the car a more stock uh, appearance, a more original look if I'm not using it um, on a racetrack or a hill climb. Secondly, um, because of the vehicle inspection here in Belgium, so it's uh, the Belgian equivalent of an MOT, you're not allowed to have a front cage. You can have a rear hoop, but not a front cage. So I do have to be able to take it out when I take the car for an inspection. Um, so now I have to figure out what joints I want to use. Because I'm building the car to FIA spec, I do have to use approved joints. And there are a couple of uh, methods to do this. You can have a slip joint, so a bigger tube that slips over the existing tube. You can have uh, interlocking uh, lab joints. You can have the saddle joints. And you can have <coughs> a clevis type joint. I don't like um, the saddle type joints, I just don't like the way that they look and you also have to have the tube at 90 degrees on the other tube otherwise it's very difficult to work with uh, that type of joint. The interlocking lab joints are really nice but they're very expensive and it's quite a lot of work because you do have to notch the tube, weld it on, cut it, uh, put the lab joints in between and weld that on both sides so it's a lot of work. I will probably have to use these on some places but um, I'm trying to minimize this and I'm thinking of using the lab joints on some places to get a little bit of rigidity in the base and then using the clevis type joints on all of the um, outer sections so I will obviously lose I will uh, definitely use the clevis type joints on the door bars and our diagonal. I'm still debating on using it on the roof bar and at roof level. If I'm following the current Appendix J uh, file for the FIA, uh, I don't think that we're allowed to use those. However, the historic regulations are a little bit um, less stringent. So I'm, if I'm reading the regulations correctly, we probably can use these. But um, I'm still debating on uh, what type of joints to use. So I'm going to continue with putting all of the tubes in in the correct position, trimming them to size. And I'm just going to order a couple of uh, different types of joints and uh, see how they look. And then I can still decide uh, what I want. But uh, I'm happy with uh, the progress so far. I have the two front half laterals in. So you can see one there and one there. Now I've got the windshield bar uh, down a little bit. But it's not exactly to length yet. So I've clamped this to the roof. It needs to go uh, in a little bit obviously. But now I'm going to mark and trim this so that this will fit. So we're almost ready with the mock-up of this uh, windshield bar. I'm going to trim the ends a little bit more so that uh, it gets up a little bit higher onto the actual middle of the bend on this half lateral. And then um, it will stick up a little bit more into the roof panel. So it can go up a little bit more then it will uh, not be in our field of view in the windshield 
but we're getting there. It just needs a little trim, and then it will be in. I've mocked up the roll cage, the main hoop, the front half laterals, and the windshield bar are all cut and trimmed to size. The outriggers for the sill bars are cut to size. The only thing that we need to uh, completely finish off are the door bars and the diagonal in the front, but they're mocked up at the moment. I am waiting for the roll cage connectors to uh, finish these off. We'll quickly take a look at the roll cage, how it stands at the moment. You can see that our front half laterals are really uh, nice and evenly spaced with our A pillar and it, it tucks up really nice into the roof. You can see that the main hoop sticks very nicely to the shell and it tucks up into the roof while still remaining uh, enough spacing to get a headliner in there. The diagonal now sits through the rear window but obviously it needs to be uh, cut and finished on top of the main hoop with a removable connector. You can see that the front half lateral tucks up nicely into the roof and then it follows the A-pillar and connects onto the sill bar around there. The diagonal will connect onto the sill bar or the outrigger and this will make sure that our main hoop will not be able to remove in that way or in that way. Obviously we're going to make this uh, diagonal removable so I can take a passenger. When we take a look at our roof bar, it has two bands in it, one there and one there, so it tucks up nicely into the roof. We can move this uh, windshield bar a little bit more like this, so it will definitely not block the view from the inside outwards, uh, but um, it will uh, clear very well. It has the same spacing as the main hoop, so it tucks nicely into the roof, but still has enough room for a headliner. Now we have these door bars, so um, they'll probably go from here to here. And uh, I'd like to have them a little bit higher, but then it's very difficult to get in and out because it is already a very tiny door opening. I measured all of the lengths and I weighed uh, a one meter section of tubing. So um, all those 15 meters of tubing here and at 2.3 kilograms per meter is about 36 kilograms for the entire cage. Um, we'll have to add a little bit of weight for the interchangeable connectors. So it will be, I think, 40 kilograms of weight penalty to get this roll cage. Um, but you have to win some and lose, lose some, so, uh, it's so it's 40 kilograms, but it's a lot safer this way. Also, I'm hoping that uh, we're losing a little bit of weight in the car. I think it should be possible to lose 40 kilograms on the chassis um, with uh, a new lithium-ion battery, uh, the aluminium radiator and so on. So hopefully we're losing a little bit of weight there. And we're adding it in with the roll cage, but uh, that's life. My roll cage connectors have arrived. So we have a couple of different types of connectors that we're going to use. Uh, this is the first one. So this is a clevis type connector. It's uh, made by OMP and this is FIA spec. So this is a steel end that fits into roll cage tubing like this. So it needs to be welded in place. And then we have uh, the connector bit that goes on the outside of the roll cage tubing. However, um, this piece has been made for a 40 millimeter outer diameter tubing. But um, with a little bit of effort, we can uh, make this fit on our 38 millimeter tubing. So it's a little bit loose as you can see, but if we put it in a vise and we pinch it a little bit, it fits perfectly. I've tried with uh, another set. So I have 12 of these connectors. Um, and I may need to add a little bit more. I've already tried welding one end on the tubing. Uh, I was a little bit afraid 
that uh, because this is a casting that it wouldn't fit uh, nicely and it would be very difficult to weld however um, it's not really a problem it cleans up nicely and with my thick welder there's uh, no bubbling uh, so it welds very nicely as you can see this is the clevis end and this is the joint that I uh, made fit to our 38 millimeter tubing and it fits perfectly so we can weld these pieces to a roll cage so once this is welded to your tube we have a 10 millimeter bolt that goes through the clevis and then we have a removal section so we can just unbolt this and the tube will slide out The other type of joint is this. This is a section of seamless tube, roll case tube, but this has a bigger inner diameter, bigger outer diameter. And this slides on our 38 millimeter tubing and it sits nice and snug. We have to drill holes in this to make a connector sleeve so that we can cut the underlying tube into sections. So we have two possibilities, either we use a 10 millimeter bolt here and one here, so two 10 millimeter bolts, or we can do a cross edge pattern from two from the top and two from the side, so four 8 millimeter bolts to connect this. Uh, we will uh, use two 10 millimeter bolts in our sill bars, just because um, it's the only way that we can take uh, the bolts out because we cannot reach from the top because underneath the seat and on the main hoop we'll use the cross hatch bolts because it will give a little bit more uh, sturdiness in some directions that may uh, rattle a little bit less um, we're going to try to mock it up completely see if everything fits if we need to add a little bit more uh, connectors we will However, I'm quite happy that these fit nicely and that they weld okay. So uh, that's the hardest thing that I'm happy with. I drilled all of the sleeves to the holes that we marked earlier. So this is uh, a sleeve for the M8 bolts. This is one for the M10 bolts. So what we're doing here is we're making our sill bar, a two-piece sill bar. So this is the longest section. It goes underneath the seat right up to the main hoop and this is the front section so essentially I marked all the holes made sure that it all lined up then I cut the sill bar into two so now I'll see how this all connects so we'll install uh, the bar like this then we can put in the front section and it should line up and then we should line up all of the holes and then we have uh, M10 bolts so these are ISO 8.8 this is the right sill bar so the bolts will go in from the inside this bolt will go underneath the seat so we can access this from the hole uh, under the a base cushion. I'll weld some um, M10 nuts on the sleeve that way I don't have to um, get a nut on there underneath the seat. It is possible but it's a really big um, faff. So we're going to try to make it as easy as we can. Like this. You have to be careful not to over tighten the uh, bolts because you can actually uh, crush the sleeve and it's very difficult to take apart again. So now these two tubes are one section 
obviously there's a little bit of slop uh, and that's normal uh, because it only intersects with one bolt so it it can move in that direction uh, on the sill bars I could only use this design because underneath the seat uh, the seats about there so I cannot get uh, a bolt out this way and you have to choose to be either 1M10 or 2M8s and I couldn't get the M8s to work underneath the seat um, I just couldn't reach it so um, this is the only design that I could use the roll cage is in it's only tagged in for the moment but all the tubes have been cut to size have been mitered all the joints are in and everything fits and the cage is completely removable now I had to add in a few more joints uh, than I had anticipated but we got there in the end so we have the main hoop which goes through the bulkhead then we have two front half laterals going from the roof level to uh, the floor on the floor there's a sill bar on either side with uh, outriggers that connect it then we have a windshield bar which connects both front half laterals we have two front outriggers which connect the front of laterals to the front of the T-section on the chassis. And then we have our diagonal in the front, so it's uh, essentially a single front stay for the main hoop. And it's placed diagonally so that uh, we can connect and catch the lateral forces because we cannot have a, a diagonal in our uh, main hoop because of the seats. So I'll jump in, uh, ingress and egress is possible, but it's not elegant. So I've placed the bulkhead in just to mock it up, it's not uh, bonded in yet. And I've placed in the old seats just to uh, see how everything fits. Now I'm quite comfortable, um, nothing is in the way, the door bar is in the same height as the central tunnel there's plenty of room for a helmet I've also placed in the pedals to uh, check how everything fits the diagonal is removable if I want to take a passenger a passenger can get in with the diagonal uh, but it's not quite safe because it's very close to the head of the passenger uh, I've, at first I thought it was going to be quite loose but once all the joints have been torqued up it's really stiff, uh, there's no movement at all. Essentially the front outriggers weren't necessary, uh, but I did like to prevent a front wheel coming into the cabin. So the out outrigger connects the roll cage to the chassis to block off uh, the wheel well. And I could have six mounting points with the FIA rules. So we have two on the outriggers, one on my feet and one right beneath the seat and then one on the front of the T-section with the outrigger so I can get in uh, my view is not obstructed at all this one is really parallel to uh, the A-pillar and this one is tucked up into the roof so you're not losing any visibility the doors still fit with the door bars that's also essential I checked that so this is the front half of the cage the front half laterals, the windshield bar, you can see the outriggers in the front, they're close to the pedals and then we have an, uh, a front stay here as well as the on the other side so you can see um, that it's a really nice triangle shape so this is all connected and then the diagonal connects to that so I can remove everything uh, which I'm going to do now so that I can mock it up outside of the car and weld everything because that's not happened yet but um, I'm really happy with the cage it sits very nicely in the interior I didn't have to modify anything except from the four holes in the bulkhead but um, they can always be patched up if necessary but I can take the roll cage out run it as standard without any roll cage um, because the, the roll cage does have a weight penalty the roll cage adds about 30 to 40 kilograms 
which is quite a lot in such a light car, but I did not want to venture out on a racetrack without a roll cage. Um, plastic cars are not safe. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time that we see the roll cage, we'll be putting it in the car and we'll patent beforehand. So I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of the upcoming videos and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.